live from the Mandalay Bay Convention Center in Las Vegas. It's the Cube covering VMworld 2016. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem sponsors. Now here's your host, Stu Miniman. Welcome back to the Cube. I'm Stu Miniman here with Silicon Angle Media's flagship program. We go out to all the big enterprise technology shows, help extract the signal from the noise. Here at VMworld 2016, our seventh year at the show, uh, we're in Las Vegas. Uh, happy to welcome out of the program two first-time guests uh, from Cominario. We have Danny Galan, who is the founder and CEO, and Josh Epstein, who is the vice president of marketing. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. No, thank you for having us. Thanks for having us. All right, so 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 so, Danny, uh, give us a little bit about your background. You and I actually worked together at a large storage company in, in a previous life. Um, people have said that VMworld is storage world. You, you are a storage company. Yes. Uh, but uh, just give a little bit of our audience your background in the company. Uh, absolutely. So, uh, founded the Caminario in 2008 uh, as the next generation uh, uh, storage company. It happens to be in the next generation media, which is uh, 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 Flash. We're an old Flash uh, storage company. A pleasure to be here. That's not the first uh, uh, time I've been uh, part of storage. I've been in the storage industry for uh, quite a while. Uh, we've been together at EMC, so uh, uh, absolutely a pleasure to be here. All right, and, and Josh, just give us a little bit about your, your background and uh, tell us what, what, what's Common Area known for? Is it, there's so many storage companies here, uh, you know, are you AFA, or are you, you know, yeah, XYZ? No, sure. <laughs> so, I mean, so I also started my career at EMC way back, and I left about uh, 10 years ago and swore I was never going to work in another storage company ever. Uh, so I, yeah, spent, I, uh, I, I almost feel like I'm one of the, hi, I'm Stu, I also work <laughs> at EMC, you know. <laughs> So I uh, spent about 10 years doing a, a variety of B2B uh, startups across across the uh, application stack. Um, and I got introduced to Common Area this uh, past year, and really as I started digging into it, first I'm like, no way, I'm not going to do it. Started digging into it, met Danny, met the team, and started looking at the industry. And you know, a lot's the same, but a lot's very different. It's a much uh, more kind of exciting, agile time in, in infrastructure and storage in particular. And Flash is just a you know phenomenal market. I don't think we've ever seen you know, a, 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 a switch over of technology this, this wholesale ever. Um, so, great market, great tech, uh, great team, and uh, excited to be part of the, uh, of, of the next uh, generation of storage. Okay, so, so Denny, you said founded the company back in 2008. Fast forward us through kind of the, the, the journey, and I want kind of your, your longitudinal view as to kind of the storage industry. Uh, many people that if they're not in storage, they look at storage as this arcane thing, and we're always getting super excited about, oh, it's Flash this, NVMe, you know, 3D X point, you know, there's always some new little cool point technology, yes. but w what do you see as the big trends? You know, uh, storage used to be boring, not anymore, right? Uh, it's exciting times. Uh, I, I believe this is not just the biggest revolution um, in storage ever that is happening. This is uh, the biggest revolution maybe since uh, cloud and virtualization. And the reason I say this is if you look at any uh, other element in the stack from application, CPU, memory, networking, they're all advanced orders of magnitude. The one element that was left behind is storage. One, because it was based on the only mechanical element in the data center, but also the predominant uh, uh, architectures product there were designed 25 years ago. And so you, you had to do it differently. You had to uh, reinvent how you do storage, uh, and the way we do it is completely different than, uh, uh, than the legacy way. All right. And Vis-a-vis -vis kind of the competition out there, there's so many sub-segments, you know, from the days at EMC. EMC's got a broad portfolio. Joe Tucci used to always say, I want overlap so that my competition can't get a wedge in there. Yeah. Uh, it was just announced today the, the Dell EMC deal will close on September 7th, so yeah. we believe that's kind of a seminal moment in kind of the storage industry that, you know, storage as we knew it has changed forever. Absolutely. You know, how does Common Area fit in and, and how do you drive forward on this? Deal? A great question. Yeah. I think that the, uh, the way we looked at the market, very early on, we said, we believe the next generation cloud would be all Flash. And when we said it, it was quite controversial. Flash was at $1,000 per gig, and people look at us uh, uh, as a bit crazy. And we've seen technologies, some of them are excellent technologies, going after specific niches in the market, virtualization, the public cloud, uh, the SMB market. And we said, no, we believe uh, that the next generation storage has to be all flash. 
uh, the next generation general purpose storage has to be uh, all flash. And we've built the Caminario K2, the name of the product, as the next generation general purpose storage that truly you standardize your next generation cloud deployment or your next generation data center on it. Yeah. So Josh, I want to get your viewpoint. When we look at things at Wikibon, it's not always you know, the direct replacement that makes a change. So uh, it, it's not that, uh, you know, VMware, we talked for years about Hyper-V competing for storage. It was like, you know, we, we spent years, it was block versus file versus object. When we look at the workloads, there's public cloud and there's SaaS. Uh, and we, when you said not owned in my data center, controlled on my hardware, two thirds of that public cloud market is software as a service. Yeah. So how does Kaminar look at that? You know, how are you playing into those customers? Yeah, so you know, when I joined, we Dan and I we stepped back, we started looking at at the market, and just organically, uh, common era, over 50% of our business has been historically been from SaaS companies, and so we stepped back, looked at that, tried to understand why that was, and looked at, at the market in general, and just thinking about the cloud market. To your point, I mean, the, the cloud strategy for enterprise really is dominated by adopting SaaS infrastructures, um, and that's for a few different reasons, right? You know, one, you know, the the, the all the ISVs are moving to to cloud delivered versions of their applications. Um, you know, but the other piece is that the simplicity it offers to, to the enterprise, it's not just great software, not just a great application, it's the ability to kind of outsource that entire application delivery infrastructure. So as we see these SaaS companies really uh, um, looking at application delivery infrastructure as part of their core competence, they're looking to actually build out storage infrastructures, data center infrastructures, optimize for that delivery, and that's really what Cominario does uniquely. We've got several things that we do differently from anyone else that really fits squarely in that, uh, in that, in that realm for, 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 for SaaS infrastructure. All right, so in yesterday's morning keynote, Pat Elsinger kind of gave a dissertation on digital transformation. Can you connect the dots for us, Josh? You know, how does that impact really the infrastructure strategy as people kind of digitize and go online more with their businesses? It, so, I mean, I look at, I spend a lot of time, um, you know, across the application stack, right? And if you look at what's happening at the very top level, the types of things that are driving the evolution of, of user experience, whether it's mobility, IoT, uh, real-time analytics, at that top level, requirements are changing. Users expect a different experience. In the middle level, in the application development cycle, everything is different. I mean, agile development, DevOps, the way that people attack this problem of delivering new functionality is, is, is changed, is different. Um, at that bottom level, at that, that storage infrastructure layer, it's like the old man in the room. I mean, it, that, legacy architectures can't evolve that quickly. So they need to really build this agile storage architecture that can evolve uh, in time, it can evolve both uh, scaling up, scaling out, the ability to actually adopt new technologies that become available, and the ability to evolve with the application as the application evolves itself is really important. All right. Danny, I was wondering if you can give us a little bit of kind of some, some facts about customers, what they're adopting. You know, SaaS customers, how many do you have, and how are they looking to come in our area to help drive that yes. digital transformation? So why do we have such a, a high adoption rate in public uh, clouds? Because if you look at public uh, clouds, you have really infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. And we believe that software as a service is really uh, um, leading um, uh, the, the, the pack in terms of how they, they treat uh, infrastructure. Today we have hundreds of SaaS companies as customers that are running their whole stack, their whole end-to-end uh, -end uh, application stack on Kaminario. Why? Okay. If you look at what uh, a typical SaaS company needs, they have some sort of front uh, uh, application that generates uh, really uh, uh, money for them, but also very sophisticated real-time analytics. This is probably the most difficult behavior for the underlying infrastructure because on the same data set, you're running two very different um, um, workloads, and on top of it, you need to run DevOps, you need to run uh, engineering, uh, virtualization, uh, etc. So how do you do that on a common uh, a platform that can grow uh, with you? And what uh, the reason they adopt Kaminario is that we have exceptional scalability. We scale with them seamlessly. And we do it in a very cost-efficient way. So uh, scalability, cost efficiency and the ability to really run any types of mixed workload really distinguish us uh, versus uh, 
any other technology out there for SaaS companies. Yeah, I wonder if you can unpack for us a little bit more the, the analytics you talked about, because the big trend we see that we think is heartening is it's not just about storing or keeping up with your information. Scalability, distributed architectures, of course, are critical for lots of new modern applications, but how can I leverage, understand my data, get new business value out of my data? Oh, a absolutely. This is a great uh, question because what we've uh, developed in the underlying technology that has a very close relationship with the application is we've developed a proprietary patent um, algorithms that detects the behavior uh, of the application that talks to us. And, and when it's uh, analytics, we will adapt our behavior to exactly the behavior of the analytical engine that runs uh, on Caminario. That gives the customer a very predictable uh, performance across any uh, any workload at any given time, um, and they give it. It really gives them peace of mind uh, when they're running very different types of analytics uh, on uh, Caminario. If I could just build on that, you know, if you look, take the perspective of, of a SaaS company or an online customer-facing online service, online retail, online finance, you know, it's all about differentiating the technology, differentiating their, their, their offering, their, their functionality, their user experience. So integrating real-time analytics has become extremely important, right? Whether it be in an online retail setting where you're offering a customized or personalized buying experiences, right? That is an example of online analytics that are running side by side on production databases. So the ability to, to handle that classic OLTP workload with an analytics workload simultaneously and, and deliver consistently high user experience is fundamental to, to that SaaS company or that online services company who are just competing, they themselves are competing on functionality, on customer retention, on, on, on user experience. In fact, Stu, we believe uh, that today we're the number one storage providers uh, for SaaS companies because all of those advantages and the fact that we're very, very focused uh, on this segment of the market where we enjoyed the tremendous success. Yeah, that's a, it's an interesting claim. Do you have any facts and figures you can back that up with? You know, as an analyst, we always, you know, need to a understand. Absolutely. If you look at uh, uh, the top 500 uh, SaaS companies uh, and the presence that we have there, uh, this is how we derive. Obviously, uh, this is more of a use case. There is no uh, particular market uh, that that measures that. And to the best of our knowledge, from what we've done internally uh, and some uh, outside uh, consultants, we derive to that uh, conclusion. Yeah. And any commentary about yourselves compared to not the traditional storage guys, but what about Amazon? Because most people, you think SaaS, you think you know startups building some of these environments. We, we've all seen, if we watch the industry, some big guys that go to Amazon, get off of Amazon, get back on Amazon, and go back and forth. Yes. Um, Obviously, we've all seen Amazon uh, uh, success and, and uh, numbers and adoption. Uh, and we like to compare ourselves um, uh, to AWS with one element. It's the ease of, uh, of acquiring. How easy it is to just deploy instantly uh, 100 VMs and 200 terabytes. And one of the things that we've, uh, we've done uh, throughout the life of the company is how easy it is to do business. Let's face it, Stu, people hate buying storage. It's complex, it's convoluted, um, it's, not, uh, it's not easy at all. And we aim to change it uh, drastically. And what we've done is two things that we believe is completely different from the rest of the industry. Um, we call uh, our program k Assured Program that re really gives the customer two elements that haven't got from, uh, uh, from leg uh, legacy storage. One, predictability, and two, agility. What do I mean by that? Uh, you want to make sure that when you buy your next generation uh, a storage product, it gives you predictability. Predictability uh, in cost, uh, in availability, and performance. And in fact, we've put uh, hard guarantees in our contracts on, on those three elements. But also you want to make sure that you're protecting your future, not your, just your current um, um, purchase. And we've done it as well. We guarantee uh, our customers that they will never forklift upgrade with Caminaro because we have this very scalable uh, architecture that you can mix and match new technologies with current technologies. Uh, they will never increase their maintenance pricing 
and we will guarantee uh, the life uh, of the SSD forever. No limitations as long as, uh, as they're under uh, maintenance uh, with Caminario. So predictability and agility uh, for uh, the future. Yeah. Josh, do you have any customer examples, feedback you're getting from customers to validate what Danny is saying about the differentiation that you have? Yeah, no, just uh, you know, recent examples that we've talked about uh, uh, publicly work with a company called uh, Payoneer, uh, that uh, a leading uh, payment processing company, uh, offices around the world. Uh, they're running uh, Caminero on both uh, real-time analytics, OLTP, and, and NoSQL workloads, so they're a great uh, MongoDB uh, customer. We, we've um, uh, worked with a, a company called the Emergency Communication Networks, uh, which is a SaaS-based offering replacing traditional like 911 uh, services, a very novel approach to delivering that, that kind of infrastructure and, and relying on, on high-performance uh, uh, all-flash uh, that's extremely scalable and has a very uh, consistent scalability story has been a, a big factor in, in, in them adopting. Um, we've got uh, really across the board, and SaaS is an interesting space. As Danny said, it's not a vertical, right? It's a business model. And really all ISVs um, are, are moving to some type of cloud-delivered uh, uh, solution or, or they won't be here in, in five years. Um, and, and so as the examples run, run across the board. And if I could just sort of pick up on something we talked about, the, the Amazon um, you know, uh, issue. I mean, one of the things we're seeing, I mean, if you, clearly if you're a startup, if you're a SaaS startup, an app startup, you know, you're going to build on AWS from day one. But that it reaches a certain point, a certain scale, uh, where the economics really turn in favor of, of, of building out your own private cloud-like like infrastructure. Um, and really what we see is, is uh, those, those uh, customers that reach that scale, they look at that application delivery infrastructure as part of their core competence, as part of their product. So they really do want the flexibility to, to build it out, that, uh, to match it directly uh, with, with the requirements of their application. All right, Danny, I want to like to give you the final word as people look at Cominario, what can we expect going forward? Any kind of benchmarks or milestones we can look to see kind of the continued momentum that you've built? Absolutely, so uh, we've been growing exceptionally fast. Um, we tripled the company over the last uh, five quarters. Uh, any metric that you can think of, we enjoyed tremendous success. It's no doubt that what we've uh, thought uh, uh, way back then uh, that the next generation uh, cloud would be all flash is happening today. I think that it's uh, clear to people, it's just a matter of time. Some uh, uh, people are doing it today, some uh, are, t it will take a year or two, but it's here, uh, it's now. And the final word is, um, it, it's, it's people should uh, um, jump into the water. People absolutely need to give us a try when they think about their next generation architecture and their next generation challenges in the next uh, few years. All right, well, Danny Galan, Josh Epstein, really appreciate the updates on Cominario. Really interesting to look at kind of SaaS and where that can live going forward. Helps to clarify a little bit some of that hybrid cloud message we've been talking about for many years. We'll be back with lots more coverage here from VMworld 2016. You've been watching theCUBE.